Do you really want to improve the textures and materials that you make inside of Blender? The way to do that is by actually making imperfections in our materials. The imperfections really help to stack up to make it look like it's a real world object. Now, if you've ever done that in the past, you know it takes quite a lot of work to layer all these multiple noise materials on top to really get something to look photogenic. Well, we're going to build a node system that's going to take all that layering and put it into one node. So all we have to do is just slide in the sliders for whatever noise pattern we want and boom, we'll be ready to go. I'm going to walk you step by step on the process. It's going to be extremely easy. And by the time we're done with this video, you will have your own custom built noise generator that you made. So enough of the jibber jabber, let's get straight into the video. So what I have is a general material connected here. I have a little bit of a uh, albedo gray in here. I have a set to GGX energy preserve and I have a little bit of metallic in here. The shader is just so you can see the noise, right? We're not gonna actually save this. So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna go shift S and I'm gonna go C O M. We need a composite texture material. Plug this into the roughness. And then from here, we're gonna start off, we'll say we'll just do four. We'll go one, two, three, four. So then what we need to do is we're going to connect out our in our noises to these little guys here. OK, and matter of fact, let me before I get too far into this, we're going to take this one here. And if you look here, we've got these blend modes. We're going to turn this blend mode to lighten. OK, and that's going to allow us to stack them on top of each other. So we don't they kind of like mix together. And we're going to go ahead and plug that into two. Next one into three and then the last one into four. OK, you're not limited to four. You're limited to however many you want. Or you can just keep adding these things here. I don't know what the max is on this, but four is a good number. And now clearly you can already see what's happening here. It's all gray out because everything is like a value of one. Right? And there it is. So everything is basically full diffuse. They're all layered together. They're going to be layering on top. So let's add in our first noise pattern. Control shift S and I'm going to go noise. There it is. Noise texture. I'm going to take that, plug it into the input of the top one here. And then from there, we should start to see some type of noise pattern going on. OK, there's my noise pattern. Always when you're using these procedural noises, this will not stick to this actual geometry if you animate this geometry. So make sure you have some type of projection on there. And now the projection will stick to the actual geometry if it's animated. OK, so that's extremely important. So that's cool. We like that there. Let's go ahead and minimize that. And then let's go ahead and add in our UVW transform. And maybe we can go ahead and scale this back up a little bit. And now I'm going to add in a little bit of contrast, maybe like 10. OK, that's looking good. Again, if we want this pattern to have more more details, you can crank up your octave. We got more details there and then the octaves. Also, you can play with the octaves. We're going to just want to play with these settings as much as possible. Each one making it slightly different. Now, also the white area, I'm going to kind of make that a little bit more darker color there. And now on top of this, what I want to do is add in a gradient map to my quick color gradient map, which is our color ramp version basically here. And now I'm going to go ahead and preview from out of here with Node Wrangler. Okay, Node Wrangler, I'm going to grab these guys, move them back a little bit, give us some room here. All right. And again, nothing in life is pure black and pure white. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of off the white there, off the black and add a little bit off the white. Okay. And then you can use these if you want to add some more contrast, you can do that here. So you got room to play. This is just another option to play with. OK, this is going to be our basic general setup here for basically each noise pattern and each noise that we're going to make. The only thing that we want to add in here, too, so we can have them all connected at the end, this 3D transform. All we need is this, the scale. So what I'm going to do is go shift a S scale and then I'm going to go scale as C scale transform. That's what we need there. Let's take this scale transform and we've got a value of three. I'm just going to put that same value here, put that in there, kill this, and then just go ahead and plug this into there. It's doing the exact same thing, but we have an output here now that we can use for when we build these up together. And again, to build these up together, we're going to need one more node here and we're going to come to shift S type in math. We want the binary math operation again, blue, blue matches. OK, and again, the bottom value. We want this to be the, always the same as whatever this value is going to be on this. Whatever this noise pattern scale is, we want that to be on the bottom. And we're going to multiply that by itself by one. But we also need to come down to operations and change this to multiply. Make sure you do that. Now we can connect this up. Boom. Now this whole section here is ready to go. It's ready to start to be connected to our group. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these guys. I'm going to press control J just group them together. And this will be noise number one. So you can come in here, tab into in, 
give it a noise give it noise noise one of course you want to name these something more you know conducive to what the actual noise looks like like soft gradient or you know noise whatever you're going to know for you to, re to recognize it so i'm going to put noise one what we need to do is repeat this process again four times okay so i'm gonna do it one more time with you guys and i'll fast forward i'm gonna go shift duplicate we're gonna change the noise pattern on this one here so this time i'm gonna click on this one and i'm gonna solo it so we can see what we're working on and it's the exact same as the top one right so let's change it up i'm gonna actually make this one a lot more softer go back to one there we go and then i'll maybe make these blotches more softer okay and just kind of make it a opposite of something the other one was and maybe even kind of bring in the black a little bit press the black a little bit kind of change up this vibe here something like that okay there it is it's something different a matter of fact i can come in even here and change the scale maybe we can just go ahead and give this a smaller pattern right something like let's just go to one okay there's a smaller pattern matter of fact maybe two so copy this value to the bottom of this value. Okay, 1.4, they match. Now go ahead and make sure we connect this back up. And that's our second pattern. Okay, so we got two different patterns and we can actually have these patterns connected together. Now we got to plug this one into the second one. So they're separate and we can have control. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the output and plug it into the input. All right, and zoom in so you can get into the texture input. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this three more times here. As a matter of fact, quickly to show you what we're doing here, let's click back onto our node and there that is. So we got these two noise patterns here. If I bring one in there, you can see that there's that. And if I bring the second one in, it's on top of that one. There it is. It's on top. And let's go ahead and solo from here so we can see the difference. So there's there's pattern number two. And here's our top on one here. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this really fast with the next two. And I'll show you guys how to connect them all together to work as one. I quickly want to ask one small favor for you guys. 77% of you guys are not subscribed to this channel. Now, by you hitting that subscribe button, that signals to me that you guys want more material like this. And that will make me get into the motivation of creating more material for you guys like this. Do me a little favor, smash that subscribe button. Enough of my jibber jabber. Let's get back into the video. All right, so I've got all of my different noises connected. One, two, three, four. Again, I got all my scale nodes connected with the proper values. They're set to multiply. And then this is connected into the input of each one of these guys here. And then they're also set to lighten so we can have them all stacked. So now what we want to do is take this and go all of these guys here and we want to group them. Control G. And now we have our group here. Now in our group, what we're going to need to do here, up oh, looks like we have one little thing, one issue here. This projection shouldn't be connected to that. So let's go ahead and this, our projection node should just be the normal projection. Bring that back here. Again, every, everyone must have a projection node, especially if you're doing any type of animation, the noise will not stick, okay? So there we go, we got that. Now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna connect all of our scales first, okay? So I'm gonna go from the top here Remember the value of one, we're going to take that and we're going to put them into here. Matter of fact, actually, let's delete this projection because that uh, made a different one here. So let's go a plug that into there. Good. Now we have the proper one here. Click on the group tab, select the a and we're going to call this scale. Right. And now they all need to be plugged into the same one so we can control them all at the same time. So again, take a take a connect that there. So all of those are connected in. So next, what we need to do, if we tab out, we see we have the scale control, but it's like, how do we control all of them with these values here? So we got to change that. We come over here from this and change it to float. And then again, here we look back, we're going to jump out of tab. Now we have our values here, but it's going into the negatives and we really don't want that. So let's go ahead and set that up. So it's not going into the negatives tab back in here minimum i'm gonna go 0 0.001 that's gonna be my minimum okay and then my default value i kind of want it to be one okay so i want to go ahead and dump that tab back out and there it is now everything is kind of we have control and it's not going into the negatives and to see what that's doing 
really it's basically just controlling the scale of everything but we don't see anything right now because we have to have those values plugged in so we jump back here next we're going to club connect our values in and what we can do is here i can actually just grab this guy here let me drag him right over here while we're working here kind of right there so we can see what's happening so what this input we're going to take this opacity from number one and which was number one was called noise one right and i'm just going to take that opacity and plug it into this one here and now we have opacity let's click on opacity change it to noise one okay now it's the noise one and now if we tab out there's noise one and if we go ahead and see if that's working up oh, it's working now you can clearly see there is our noise and then again the scale is set to zero so watch that it should be set to one and there's our first noise working properly go ahead and set that to one there it is okay so now we just need to repeat that with all of these other ones here number two take the opacity it goes into its own slot there it is click on that rename it noise two and all the way down to down to number three and number four okay so let's go ahead and drag this back here and there it is now for me i like to do a little bit of housekeeping because i don't like my wires crisscrossing like that so a quick thing hold down shift right mouse button grab the node press g and then you can kind of just guide these again same thing here hold down shift right mouse button g and you can kind of just guide this and make it look a lot cleaner and just it helps you to understand your work a lot better especially you might come back into this file a long time from now and you're like what the heck is what what did i do this is just going to help things look a little bit more cleaner okay. all right so boom there it is that looks a lot more cleaner and a lot more organized and it's just a good habit to to work with you know so you can understand your flow and if you ever give this file they can understand what's happening okay tab out of there here is our what we made here okay let's go to zero all those out if you zero them out there should be nothing on there that's how you know it's correct there's no noise on here we can bring in there's number one there's number two that looks good there's number three that looks great and here's number four they're working properly again we can scale them up and then maybe we can start to mix them here we're bringing a little bit of three right so again let's check the scaling are they both scaling they both are scaling up and they're both are scaling down you can set your min and maximum values on that if you prefer add a little bit of fog there let's add a little bit of this one here and then boom there it is like you have this noise that's basically resolution unlimited like if no matter how big it is it's going to look nice and tight and clean and nobody has this noise nobody has this noise pattern because you made it it's custom right you never have to worry about licensing and stuff like that it's all good to go one other thing bonus tip for those who stayed this far to the end of the video let's say we have something that already has roughness on it and we want to use our node to add more roughness to it well it's extremely easy we can add one more socket in here jump back into tab and all we're going to do is add in an empty slot let's go to number four go to input there's number five Again, let's copy one of these guys here because we already have it set up to go. I'm going to bring it here up to the top. I'm going to plug it into number five. There it is. It's ready to go. Just take the input. We just need the input. Bring over the input into the group. Right. Give it its own channel. There it is. Now we need to control that input. We need to control that input. Let's take our, our opacity and also plug that into below there. All right. Let's tab out. And here it is. Now we have this new input slot opacity. So how does it work? We'll check it out right now. Oh, what happened is broken. No, this is set to 100%. This is set to a value of one, which is full, full diffuse. Kill that. There is the settings that we had prior. So if I, for example, grab another node texture node here, let's grab this one here. I'm going to make it like 50 on the contrast so we can really see it. And I plug this into the input. We're going to see that, but we don't see it because we have no opacity. We bring the opacity 100%. There it is. Now it's being mixed on top of what we also have from our other noise patterns here. And then we can control that. Let's kind of lighten that up a little bit, right? There it is. Now we can work with an existing object that has its own noise pattern, plugging in here 
and now we can mix it and we'll start controlling it with our stuff here so then you just come into your node group and give this a name here all right come into group my gin right there it is copy that and then paste that on your label paste that there make sure this is also set to fake user and then you can go ahead and save it as an import into your assets save it in its own file make sure you know where that file's at go to your edit preferences wherever that file is at go ahead and put the plus sign locate that file for me the, okay it'll be materials save it up once you're done you can go into your asset library go to your asset libraries load up your material up oh, there it is materials generators here are all my generators that i've been building recently boom super and easy set it up in your startup file also so when you go to your set up your startup file just go shift a group there here they are they're already built inside there, all ready to go now that we've got our imperfection generator done let's go ahead and put it to work in this video here i walk through blender's shader system inside of octane take a look at that and put that noise generator to work catch you guys in the next round keep rendering patrick lavar peace